Galaxite. Open to the public in 2020, this Minecraft minigame server is and has always been one of the lesser known and less played on featured servers of Minecraft Bedrock Edition. From having only three game modes and being quite behind other servers at the start, they've made some big progress over the years and it's relatively well liked and respected by the Bedrock server community, causing many to call it underrated. But is Galaxite really underrated or does it have a lower player count for a reason? In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Galaxite server, checking out all that it has to offer and digging deeper into what it's really like. This is the first installment of my Honest Review series where I review every Bedrock Edition featured server in depth, so if you're interested, let's get started. So if you're a longtime viewer of my channel, you might remember when I did something relatively similar to this about a year and a half ago. Like in this series, I went around to every Bedrock Edition featured server and gave it somewhat of a review. I say somewhat though because it was more just me playing on the server and then making an 8 minute commentary where I just kinda talk about whatever I experienced as I was playing on the server at that time. This time though, it's gonna be a little different and a lot more professional. Let me explain. For this series, I made some categories to evaluate that I think make or break a Minecraft server. First up, we've got gameplay, specifically talking about the games themselves on the server. We'll look at things like what they are, how they play, and if they're even fun. Next up, we've got the building, the models, the UI, and just the overall art of the server, and this will be evaluated by an actual artist. After that, we'll investigate the microtransactions on the server. Since featured servers run off the Minecraft marketplace, all of them have microtransactions, and I think it's something worth looking at on all of them. Next, we'll discuss the play your base in the community and talk about the people that actually make up the server. And finally, we'll evaluate the playability of the server. This will be discussing whether the games on the server actually run well on most devices, and also in certain situations talking about whether you can even play the games without paying for them. After all of that though, I'll be giving my personal opinions on the server and a final grade for the server as well. And one more thing, for each video in this Honest Review series, I'm going to be bringing on someone different for each one to check out the server with me, just to get a second opinion from another person. For Galaxite, I brought on Pocket Gaming, another Minecraft Bedrock Edition YouTuber who primarily does news. Now that you're all caught up though, let's get to talking about Galaxite, arguably one of the more unique Minecraft Bedrock Edition featured servers. So if it's your first time logging onto Galaxite in a while, you'll notice that quite a lot of things are different in their hub. First up, they've changed the general model and layout of it, and it's a completely different style once being a lot more open to now being more closed in and homey. But let's be real here, the average player isn't going to be spending too much time in the hub, so let's get into talking about the games. Starting from the left in the hub, you've got Core Wars, which is Galaxite's version of Bed Wars or Egg Wars or Treasure Wars, whichever one of those that you play. Like I said earlier though, Galaxite likes to do things in a pretty unique way. This usually just means different twists in their games that change it up a little bit. For example, in Bed Wars or Egg Wars, you can break the thing that lets you respawn almost instantly. In Core Wars though, it has a set amount of HP that you have to do damage to before it breaks. Also, if you die at any point in the game while you still have your core, your core loses one point of its damage. You can also get lost health added back to your core by doing damage to other people's cores. Basically, the core is the core mechanic of Core Wars. I think you could already probably tell this by the amount of times that I said the word core. Overall though, Core Wars is a different take on the average Wars game mode, and while I don't play it all that much, it's still definitely refreshing to see some different mechanics being added in. Next up in the hub, we've got a game mode called Rush. Like Core Wars was to Bed Wars, Rush is kind of similar in style to Sky Wars. The way that Galaxite intended you to play the game was that you instantly rush mid by punching a couple of shulker boxes and getting the loot from them. While there are islands like in Sky Wars, there isn't a void so if you fall down you can just hit one of the jump pads and get back up relatively easily, but if you stay down there for too long you'll be affected by something called the corruption which we'll talk about more in one of the games later. Assuming you rush all the way to mid though, you'll get better loot from the mid shulkers and then it's just a battle to the death with everyone else that rushed to mid. The one problem with that though is, as you can probably see by the background gameplay, pretty much no one actually rushes mid. I'll talk about why this is later in the video, but overall, like earlier, Rush is a refreshing take on Sky Wars that I find pretty fun to play. Moving on though, the next game mode that we've got is called Playground, which is arguably Galaxite's most unique game mode that doesn't actually have any unique game modes inside of it. Let me explain. 
Playground is essentially a big hub with a bunch of small micro games inside of it. You've got things like PvP duels, dodgeball, sumo, kit PvP, basically just a bunch of small fun games that you don't really have to commit too much time or brain power to. You can hop on, play a couple of duels and hop off, and that's kind of the entire point of the game mode. I say Playground is unique but not unique because while you can find all of the game modes that are inside it elsewhere, you can't really find all of them in one place like Galaxite's done. At least least until Hives Arcade comes out, but we'll have to see what that's like when it does. Overall though, I find it really fun to play on Playground, especially on stream where I can play with my viewers. It's very friendly for content in that aspect. Next up in the hub though, we've got Galaxite's newest and currently most popular game mode called Parkour Builders. If you've ever played on the housing sections of other servers like Mindplex or Hypixel, this is kind of similar in a way where you can just build whatever you want, but more centered around parkour with the additions of things like jump pads and checkpoints. For example, everyone mainly builds parkours, but I've also seen a few escape rooms and overall endurance challenges. I think this game mode has quite a lot of potential for creativity, and it's another one that I really enjoy playing. Next up though is the game called Kronos, which I will already come out and say is my favorite game on Galaxite and probably one of my favorites on Minecraft Bedrock Edition as a whole. I've gone way more in depth on a standalone video about it, but a quick rundown is that it's basically a battle royale, with chests that you can loot, ways to upgrade that loot, and a border called the Corruption that closes over time. The main different mechanic of Kronos though is that of time, and if you kill someone, you get time, if you get killed, you lose time, and it's consistently counting down as the time goes on. Once you're out of time, you can't respawn anymore, and the person who survives the longest wins. That's just a quick summary because it goes so much more in depth, but for the sake of the video, I won't and I'll just say that this is one of my favorite Minecraft game modes of all time. I highly recommend checking it out if you have time. Finally though, the last game that's displayed in the hub is called Hyper Racers, and like I've said in the past, it's literally Mario Kart in Minecraft. Minecraft. There's not much more to explain beyond that, there's power-ups, speed boosts, different carts, and it's another game that I find overall enjoyable. Now finally, there are technically two more games that you can find in the game selector in the hub, but they're not displayed as NPCs. First up, we have Prop Hunt, which is just like Gary's Mod Prop Hunt, where you select a prop and then hide, and then there's also Fill the Gaps, a memory-based fill-in-the-building type game. Both of these are legacy game modes that came out with the birth of the server, but have kind of been put on the back burner, and they aren't really played all that much anymore. Either way, that's all of the game modes that you can find on Galaxite, and now it's time to turn our attention to something a little bit different, which is what the server looks like. Believe it or not, art and aesthetics are actually really important parts of a Minecraft server, because if you just join a server and it's the most basic builds and game selectors and UIs, you likely aren't going to stay on that server for long. Now, I'm pretty decent at talking and analyzing, but art is not one of my fortes. I can draw you a stick figure and build you a dirt house, and that's about it. So, I got one of my friends, Ari, who's actually an artist, to literally just write me a script of the things that she saw and noticed on the server. Here's what she had to say, but I'm saying it, I guess? The artists at Galaxi aren't shy to get creative, as evidenced by their many unique cosmetics, custom models in the hub, or the animations you might see at the top of your screen when you enter a game lobby. Every corner of the server seems alive and tells a story or a place you could form into your own story. At the spawn area of the hub, you'll find a little showcase of the server's cosmetics, all of which are quite detailed and come in many different themes and styles. If you aren't interested in cosmetics, then you might head over to the minigames area where you'll find most of their minigames, each represented by an animated model. The models themselves are nice to look at, but really catch your attention with a short burst of movement every few seconds. If you don't feel like playing a game, then perhaps you might find yourself running around the rest of the hub. You may notice the intricate building designs, rooms filled to the brim with interior decoration, and almost nothing looks empty or bare. Overall, the Galaxite server does a wonderful job of presenting itself without the explicit need for words verbal or written. Yeah, art and design. Woo. Real talk though, even as someone that doesn't really have an eye for art, I can say that Galaxite does look really cool. Next up though, let's move on to the microtransactions that you can find on Galaxite, and a little bit of the controversy that's been going on with one of the recently added ones. Either way, the only paid rank on Galaxite is called Ultra. It gives you perks like increased party sizes, more friend slots, and double voting power just to name a few. It's kind of like a subscription-based rank where you can buy it for $4 a month, or you can purchase it for longer increments and get a little bit 
bit of a discount. Regardless, other than Lifeboat, Galaxite is the only other Minecraft Bedrock Edition featured server to have subscription ranks instead of lifetime ranks. Other things that you can buy on Galaxite include cosmetics, a battle pass that includes a bunch of cosmetics, and finally, and more controversially, the recent addition of something called Power Votes, which, if you use one, essentially locks in the map that you vote, and no votes for other maps in the game matter. You can get three map votes for a dollar, and essentially suppress other people's votes if you want to use one. Obviously, like I said, there's been a little bit of backlash to this. People don't really seem to like it. Me personally, I'm a little bit on the fence about it. In the grand scheme of things, it's pretty harmless. You vote for a map, but you're not guaranteed to win. The more skilled player is going to win. But at the same time, it really is a stupid microtransaction that doesn't really have a place on the server, in my opinion. In all seriousness, though, Galaxite isn't actually that bad with microtransactions as compared to some other servers, and the entirety of the server is playable without spending a cent. Moving on, let's talk about Galaxite's community. If you've watched any of my previous videos on Galaxite, what I've said about them in the past hasn't really changed all that much. Galaxite's community is awesome, and I'll stand by that. Their staff are always friendly and helpful, I always get a lot of the Galaxite community in my chat whenever I play on the server on stream, and overall, I've never had a bad experience with the people in the Galaxite community. Something else worth talking about that I still think pertains to the community though is trying to fill games. When Pocket and I were playing the server to get footage for this video, there were some instances where we had to wait one, two, or even three minutes just to get a game to fill. Obviously, there's not really much you can do about that. I thought it was just something worth mentioning though. Also, in certain PvP games like Core Wars, Kronos, and Rush, you're not really going to get great competition in the public games that you play of it. It's going to be a lot of mobile players, people playing for the first time, and just generally people that have no clue what's going on. Once again, there's there's not really much that you can do about it, and it's just an attribute of the server at this point, but it is something worth keeping in mind when you're playing on the server. If you want more competitive games, you're probably better off playing at peak times or joining games that streamers are in. Finally though, the last main category that we're going to talk about for this video is the playability of Galaxite. Like I mentioned earlier, you can play and do everything on the server without paying any sort of money, so there's no paywalls for playing any of the games. However, one problem with Galaxite that I think a lot of people can relate to and vouch for, is that the performance and FPS of your game is going to drop pretty hard when playing certain games on Galaxite. I know a lot of people with bad computers and especially mobile devices that just don't touch Galaxite at all because they can't play the game modes at a good frame rate. Now if you're on a mobile device that's relatively new, you'll probably be fine enough playing any of the games on the server, but especially in games like Hyper Racers, if you're playing on a low-end device, you're gonna be driving through the void for some of the game because the chunks simply aren't loading fast enough. Even even their new hub has pretty bad performance FPS wise, and I get that Galaxite wants to go big with everything they do and make it look extra nice, but I genuinely feel like they're losing some of their player base just because people on lower end devices can't enjoy the server as well as people on higher end devices. Also, finally, people on Asia region are kind of screwed because there is no Asia region they have to connect to EU or NA, and I know there's been talk of adding an Asia region, but I don't know how much financial sense it would make for Galaxite to add an Asia region region just based on how many players they get daily. So, let's talk. Is Galaxite really underrated? Well, by a dictionary definition, I'd venture to say yes. Galaxite puts so much time and effort into everything that they make on the server, and I feel like they deserve more players than the 600 to 1000 or so that they get concurrently daily. At the same time though, I think a lot of people are using the word underrated kind of incorrectly, because a lot of people don't realize that Galaxite's only been around for less than two years. Compare that to servers like The Hive, Hypixel, and Cube Craft, all of which have been around for 8 or 10 years at this point, and 2 years is honestly a really short time in a server's lifespan. Assuming that Galaxite keeps up the good work, I think you'll see Galaxite grow into a more major server as time goes on, but it's just a waiting game at the moment and hoping that it'll catch its big break. I love Galaxite, and I really want to see it do well in the future. I think it has the potential to do so, but there's also some things that need to be cleaned up like I mentioned earlier in the video. If I were to rate Galaxite out of 5 stars, I think I'd give it a there's so much good on the server, and there's just a few things to fix, and I'd choose to play it over most other servers on Bedrock Edition. As for my friend Pocket, he said he'd give it a 3.8, which is roughly the same as what I gave it, and I think that we can both agree that it's a relatively good server. What do you think about Galaxite, though? Let me know down in the comments. Either way, that's gonna be it for this one. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.